Welcome to the Tech Table. Let's catch up on what's new for Premiere Pro 2020 version 14 release. We've been working on a number of exciting things in this release, starting with a new tool called Auto Reframe, which uses our Adobe Sensei technology to automatically reformat your video in different aspect ratios like square, 9 by 16, and even custom sizes. This really makes it the perfect tool for doing different sizes for social media output. We've also done some retooling across our applications for faster playback with popular formats like Apple ProRes, including ProRes HDR and H.265 HEVC. We've even added some new support for Canon C4, Canon XF HEVC, Sony V4 with high frame rate, and I'm really excited about MXF export for Apple ProRes for both Mac and Windows. We've also been working on a new way to help you troubleshoot your editing systems. We're introducing a new feature in Premiere Pro called the System Compatibility Report. This will alert you to certain common problems like out-of-date graphics drivers which are known to cause issues. We'll also flag your system in the upper left-hand corner reminding you that a known issue is present. This is part of a new framework we've been working on to help point out any possible issues and more importantly, how to address them. Let's jump over to the desktop and take a look at what's new for Premiere Pro 2020. Let's go ahead and start with just a single clip so we can take a look at what's happening in the areas of motion and what auto reframe is attempting to do. I'm going to start with just taking a single clip, dragging it into my sequence. I'm going to keep the existing settings because as you can see, I have it set up as a one by one square. Let's go ahead and take a look at the sequence settings so you can take a look at how I've got it set up. I've got it set up with a frame size of 1080 by 1080 to give me my one by one, 30 frames a second, no fields of course. I'm going to click OK and let me stretch out the timeline so it shows me my whole clip. And as you can see, my subject is not in center. It's off to the left-hand side of the screen, as you see on the source monitor. And at this point, I would normally just click on the clip, go to effects controls, and attempt to do whatever motion I need to do and keyframe that all the way through. And of course, having to do that for um, this clip and any other clip that's gonna be in this sequence. So let me go ahead and just undo both of those, put that back to where it was. Let's go over to effects and I'm gonna just type in auto reframe, drag and drop. It only takes a few seconds to do the analysis on the clip, and as you can see, it's automatically pulled this right in. Now let's go over and look at the source monitor. Let's set both of these at the zero point at the beginning of the clip, and I'm gonna click on the wrench menu in the source monitor and gang these two together. You can sort of watch what's happening on each side. As you can see, the square side is completely in center. The action looks really good. Now I'm gonna click on this, go to effects controls, click on position, because I want you to notice the blue area here on the outline of what's happening on the keyframing. And as I start to move my time marker, you can sort of watch the action and what the keyframing's done and sort of the Adobe magic, what Adobe Sensei has put together for you in just a matter of seconds. This is great when you have just one clip. What I think is gonna to happen to a lot of people is you're gonna have some final movies that you've already rendered that you're gonna to wanna to put back out in maybe a different format. One for nine by 16, maybe IGTV, or like you see here, a one by one for Instagram. Let's take a look at what happens if I delete this out and I grab a final exported movie like this one. Again, I'm gonna keep my existing settings. And you can already see this video is smaller than 1080 by 1080. I believe when I did this one, it was a 640 export for the web. But let's see what auto reframe can do for a video that was completely rendered with lots of different clips. And as you can see, it's a single clip. I'm gonna go ahead and load this in the source monitor as well. And let's just scrub through this so you can sort of see what's happening. There's lots of action on the screen. Some are on the left, some are on the right. There's gonna be some tracking that needs to go on. Pretty nice clip. Again, how can I repurpose this clip for social media? Very easy. We're gonna go over to auto reframe, drag and drop this on here. And you're gonna notice in just a couple of seconds, it's gonna adjust the frame size and a scale, and it's gonna go ahead and put everything on center. So let's wind this back. 
and let's hit play. So as you can see, it's really, really useful for lots of things that you might already have that you want to go ahead and get posted back on social media in these different formats. This actually blew me away when I really started watching what was going on. So again, we go back in here, we go to the effects controls, click on position. You can just tell all of those different keyframes, it's tracking lots of different things for me. There's going to be instances where maybe when Sensei was doing the analysis on the auto reframe, it didn't exactly give you enough padding on one side or the other, or there's an adjustment. Um, you will notice that if there's multiple subjects on the screen, it tries to look for those area of motion and detract things. You can always go back in anywhere you need to and modify these keyframes in these settings as necessary. And the great thing about that, they're tools that you already know how to use and no new surprises there. Let's take a look at another example where I've got a series of clips set up already arranged in the way that I want them. And if I scrub through them, I can kind of see there's a lot of work to do on each of these clips. Again, I think this is going to be a fairly common workflow as well. How can I use Auto Reframer to do this really, really quickly? Very simple. All you have to do is select all the clips jump over to effects and then drag and drop and we will go ahead and do the analysis on every single clip. And this is about 20 seconds or so. And you'll see it's really, really fast in its analysis. And I'm gonna put this on the last frame just to show you that it's almost done doing its analysis here. So we'll give this just a couple of extra seconds to do the analysis. And done. And if I come back here and I look at this, I can see that not only has it brought it down in size, there it is tracking both motion there between the two. It's recentered that one for me. And it's got the car in frame as best as it can and done a really, really decent job. Now, if I go back out and I click on one of these clips here. I'm gonna click on position again, cause I always like to see what exactly is it doing? How much motion um, is that tracking for me? So I go back into here and I can just sort of see exactly what it needed to do. Again, a huge time saver. I've got this clip where I've added some titles and I've added a different layer to sort of put a phone around it. And let's take a look and see what a final edit might do. This is exactly the same series of clips. I haven't modified them in any way. I've added some titling here for social media, uh, some audio and some sound effects. Now we picking up steam, yeah. Got the lights on green. And then we change gears for the scene. Cause SOH is the team. And I'm reaching top speed. Throwing hooks like I'm Creed. Never late to the party. Better watch me cause I'm always on time. And as you can see, a very, very easy edit. And again, I think there's going to be a ton of time saved. And again, a feature I'll be using all the time. Okay, let's switch gears and talk about a real workflow where I've got a complete sequence that is my final edit and I just need to get multiple renditions for different social media outlets. Let me just scrub the timeline and show you what's going on in this clip. This is a popular clip from Devin on YouTube. So lots of different action happening here, lots of different clips. There is a lot of things to be done by auto reframe. 
To make this easy without having to set up sequences and copying and pasting and all that, we're going to use a nested sequence and we're going to right mouse click on the sequence and go to auto reframe the sequence that you're working on. And when you do that, you get some options. Do you want to make this square, 9 by 16, vertical 4 by 5? You might want to take another video you have and turn it into a 16 by 9. Or it's the internet, so we never know what's going to be next. So there may be a custom format that you might want to use. So I'll go ahead and just make this out for Instagram and make it square. And I'm going to hit create. And what it's going to do at this point is it's going to go ahead and give me another sequence. As you can see, it's added one by one here. And it's going to start to do all of the analysis across all of these clips. And some of the things that it's looking for is it's looking for different regions, what we call salient regions. And it's doing slow versus fast tracking. And there are some different settings, which I'll show you in just a second. I just use the defaults in this example where if you're not getting exactly what you're looking for and it might be worth a second pass you can go in and make some changes and again you can always go in and make changes as you know in the motion settings for position and scale if you're not getting exactly what you wanted and there's even buttons in there to do reanalysis for different clips if you want to go in and apply that. And as you can see, it's done in under two minutes. So it's pretty fast on this particular clip. Now I'm using just a standard 2017 MacBook Pro. The faster the GPU you have, the faster this is going to work. So if I had my external GPU, for example, connected to this, because I do use a Radeon 9100 on this Mac, it's even faster. So we do take full advantage of GPU. So let's go back and take a look and see what this actually did for us. And just play this out and take a look at the different motion and see how it applied that for us. So far so good. Everything's right in right where I would want it to be. Yeah, it looks really good just right off the start. I'll just fast scrub some of this and just see what this starts to look like. It looks like there's a couple that I'm uh, frames that I might want to go in and adjust some scale to. As you can see, I've got some black area here. That's because when Devin shot this video, we shot it in multiple camera types and uh, aspect ratios. Uh, some of it was done on red, some of it's done on GoPro, but easy enough to fix. But overall, this edit looks looks really, really good. All the settings are there. Again, I can look at each of these clips and I can sort of see what did it do for each of these as it was tracking each of these clips. It honestly couldn't be faster. And anything we can do to help you get this out faster is really what we're targeting. It's all about saving time and efficiencies on the timeline and your workflow. I'm going to mention just a couple of other quick things for you to think about. One of the things I didn't talk about yet was graphics, and I am planning on doing another video on how graphics work with auto reframe and how you set them up. But just to point you in the right direction for now, I'm going to jump over to the graphics workspace. I'll just click on Adobe Stock, click on Free, and I'm just going to look for a light icon there. So I've got one here that I like. I'm going to drag and drop that right here. And let me go back and just play that out. Make sure that does what I want it to do. That looks great. So what happens if I do an auto reframe now? So I'm going to right mouse click, remember and do what I did before. I'm going to have it automatically create me a reframe sequence by using a nested sequence. And let's set this to 9 by 16 and click create. Let it do the analysis. And now you'll notice that when it recalculates this as a 9 by 16, the graphic is going to do exactly what you would expect it to do. It's going to reduce it in size, keep it in the center, and keep the animation anchored for where you expect it to be. So let's look at why it does that. So when I click on the edit and I go here to the text, 
or to the thumbs up graphic. As you might recall in some previous videos, we had talked about a new feature called responsive design. We were actually leading up to the fact that we knew at some point you'd have to do different renditions and you need to know where the animation's coming from. So I would suggest for now, take a look at that responsive design video. I'll put a link down in the text for you. But just remember that each of these have a relationship with the video frame and each other. So right now the leave a like is pinned to the thumbs up graphic and the thumbs up graphic itself is pinned to the video frame. And you'll notice that when you click on these, we're telling it that it's gonna be anchored to the bottom of the frame. If you wanted to anchor it to a corner, you could click both of these and so on. So this is how we're letting Adobe Sensei know that there's a graphic. It can handle the scaling and things like that, but what it really needs to do is to make sure that it doesn't bother the animation the way that you intend to make it. So just wanted to point that out. Now, lastly on graphics, if you want to use these automatic ways and not have to do a lot of manual manipulation, you have to create your motion graphics templates inside of Premiere Pro. So if you make changes to these, you can right mouse click and export those as a motion graphics template directly within Premiere. For those of you using After Effects, currently there is not a responsive design inside of After Effects. So these graphics will not automatically do what you expect them to do, you're going to have to go in and manually move those around with position and scale accordingly. And lastly, just a quick word again on auto reframe and some of the motion presets that are in there. It's going to take some experiments on your side and your footage, but there are a couple of options. You'll notice in the auto reframe, you can go in and reanalyze the clip if you want to look for a different result. You'll notice in the motion preset that you've got slower, default, and faster motion. So if you wanted to go in and recalculate this with a slower motion, you can do that and take a look at the results. I do find for things like drone footage, slower motion actually works better for me. Again, we wanted to give you a couple of options to play with and you've got three of them here. And at any time you can do another analysis to recalculate that just by hitting the analyze button. I hope you find auto reframe as useful as I do and we'll catch you on the tech table next time. Dave Tech Table.